When you think of reptile-rich areas of the world, you think of Central America, Australia, Southeast Asia, but what if I told you that North America has some of the coolest reptiles available for you to keep as a pet? Today, we're going over the top five North American reptiles. My name's Adam, this is Diamond. You're watching Wicked Wicked Reptiles, stick around. find, say, garter snakes in the woods by your house, the humidity is going to be similar in your house as it is in those woods. Similar, not the same, of course. Obviously, the temperature range, the seasons, the light cycles, things like that. So it's just easier to care for. And second of all, maybe I'm just speaking for myself, but I think it's cool to keep things that I find in my own backyard. I appreciate them. I like to study them. And it's easier to study them in a big, giant enclosure that's set up as best as I can than going out in the woods every day hoping to find one. And I think a lot of these animals are super underappreciated, including number five, box turtles. One of the cooler species, now I want to say box turtles normally have a very dome-like shell, which is very unique and very interesting. This guy here, he just had a tough life, didn't really have UVB for the first 13 years of his life, so that's why he's got like this thing going on with this shell. Another unique characteristic with box turtles is they have this hinge. It's kind of hinged, the shell right there. And to me, this is unique because this is a difference between tortoises and box turtles. There are several differences because box turtles are not aquatic, like you'd think, right? You see things like sliders and Mississippi map turtles, and they're always in the water or need water. These guys actually don't swim that great. They don't have a webbed foot. They are mostly terrestrial. And the reason they have this hinge is so that when they pull themselves into their shell, they can kind of hinge it up and it's really difficult to get in there at all. Like they're really well protected in comparison to a lot of tortoises, which actually use kind of their front or back legs as protection also. The reason they're good pets is because they're small. They stay kind of around this size, maybe a little bit bigger. Overall, I just think they're very uh, kind of unappreciated. I think they're amazing animals, super fun. And if you ever get the opportunity to work with one, which especially if you're in the US, they come very cheap and very readily available. They're really rewarding. I sometimes will stick some crickets in there, one or two crickets, and I'll actually chase them down, which is hilarious because my tortoises, I don't know, they look similar, but my tortoises would never do that. Where this guy, he like kind of hunts them down like a velociraptor, it's hilarious. Number four, king snakes. Now there are a bunch of different king snakes and milk snakes are included too. And I think those are kind of the more common ones. Milk snakes of many different varieties, Pueblins, Hondurans, things like that, because all milk snakes are king snakes, but not all king snakes are milk snakes, if that makes sense. But I think we're gonna focus on my guy, Big Lou, California king snakes. They're beautiful. They kind of look like they're wearing a jail uniform, which is hilarious to me. They are fantastic eaters, maybe a little bit too good of eaters because uh, they are known for kind of mistaking things like fingers for food, but you can train yours so it's not too much of an issue. And I think with Big Lou, we're kind of getting there to a place where I can film a video like this and don't have to worry about him biting everything that he sees. The main takeaway here is they're good eaters. A lot of people don't like things like ball pythons because they go off of food or hognose snakes because it takes a while to get them on. King snakes, you don't have this issue really at all. They're just overall fantastic eaters, really easy to take care of, great temperaments on most of them in that they won't defensively bite you. It's not really a thing that a lot of king snakes do once socialized. Of course, babies will always be babies, but it's really easy to tame them out. And really kind of a six foot or smaller snakes, a lot of the time that's where they top out around five or six feet. They're big enough that they're not going to be a danger to you, but they're not gonna be fragile either. And they're kind of impressive. If I hand Big Lou to somebody, they're usually pretty impressed. He's a really cool guy, very interesting interesting and just a unique looking snake and the way they kind of look around, they seem like they know what's going on. Number three, Dendrobates erratus. Okay, first of all, that's an amphibian. Second of all, they aren't from North America. What are you talking about? Well, you're technically right. Technically, they're from Central America. We actually found some in Costa Rica when we were there a couple months ago, but since 1932, they've been endemic, or they have a population anyway, in Oahu, Hawaii. So I'm really kind of trying to throw this in there as like a monkey wrench, but I think they deserve to be there because they're amazing pets. And the fact that we have a population of them in Oahu is kind of cool. They were brought there in 1932 to control the mosquito population, which I don't know it worked at all. But overall, if you're looking for a dart frog, I think Dendrobates erratus, because there's so many different varieties of them, do really well. 
I have four. They do amazing. They eat flies like crazy. They're kind of bold. And I absolutely love them. <laughs> they are so much fun to watch. I've got several species. Because they're not a huge size, they don't eat too many flies, uh, it's not really difficult to take care of them or expensive. Overall, they're kind of a perfect frog. And because they are semi-arboreal, or that's what we're finding the more research we do, having them in a little bit of a taller enclosure gives a little bit more for your eye to look at as well, where a lot of different dendrobates or dart frogs in general uh, are gonna be found mostly on the ground. These guys do actually use the climbing space that I offer to them. So you're gonna find them in places like Florida or lots of places in that type of area, and you're gonna find them in Hawaii as well, although they're not native there, and you can keep them together. I keep my Dendrobates erratus with morning geckos, which are really cool. Very tiny little geckos, by the way. So if you're looking for a super tiny frog that doesn't make tons of noise, has an easy diet, easy care requirements as far as dart frogs go, and are very variable in their color, Dendrobates erratus. They're amazing dart frogs. Number two on the list, Chuck Wallace. Now we've talked about these guys before, and I think that having diamond here is apropos, because imagine similar care, not the same, but similar care to a bearded dragon, but a North American animal that is basically the same size, similar size, with a similar type of care requirement, a similar type of look, it's a chuckwalla. Now chuckwallas don't eat insects, so that's a difference. They come from places in the US where it gets really, really hot. So they want a really, really hot type of basking spot, really hot, not difficult care requirements, but definitely different than a lot of animals that you might be used to keeping. These are really underrated and unappreciated in comparison to the way they used to be. I used to go into pet stores around here that had really cool reptile sections when I was a kid, and I would see them everywhere often cohabbed with bearded dragons, which I don't recommend. But either way, they were basically in every reptile shop that I ever went to. Now you don't see them barely ever, like very rarely do you see them. And because of that, when you do see them, they're kind of cheap because there's not really a lot of demand, but they're amazing. They're really personable. You can keep them in very unique type of enclosures that don't take a ton to set up. They don't take a ton of work to keep either. I mean, it's kind of like keeping a tortoise sort of in that you throw in some vegetables and put a little bit of calcium and some supplementation, do your research before you get one. And that's kind of it. Make sure the bulbs don't burn out, the UVB and the basking. They're not that difficult. Okay, number one, you guys know about this animal if you've been watching the channel, the logo is this animal. Number one, hognose snakes. Especially Western hognose snakes, because in my opinion, they're the easiest to find, easiest to care for, come in the most morphs, easy to feed. Just in general, hognose snakes are awesome. In Westerns, they don't get big either. I mean, a big female might be three feet, a big male might be two feet oftentimes one and a half. A lot of the times males barely get over 100 or 150 grams. So, I mean, they're not a big animal at all. They are rear fang venomous, so something to not really worry about, be mindful of, um, because if they do bite you, they'll chew on you, and the, the envenomation can cause a little bit of like swelling and redness, but I wouldn't really make too much of a deal of it. I've been keeping them forever, and just keep your hands out of their mouth and you'll be fine. You can feed them mice their entire life. Mice are generally cheaper than rats. They'll eat frozen thawed. Once they get on food, they very rarely go off. So it's really easy. The temperature doesn't climb that high. I mean, we're talking about 84 degrees on the warm side. Overall, especially if you live in North America, if you live in a place where they're found, because they are found all the way into Canada, where obviously there's three feet of snow outside right now. Obviously they can deal with that for the winter. So in your house, if it gets to like 65 degrees at night down in your basement where you keep them, they'll be fine. You'll be fine. You don't have to worry about supplemental heating at night unless you live in like the Arctic and don't own a furnace. Overall, one of the easiest reptiles to keep, absolutely so easy, especially if you live in their native range. And they're fun to watch. They're hilarious. They have these cute little shovel faces and there's more and more morphs popping up all the time. So if you want an orange one or if you want one that looks like a regular one you'd find in the wild or somewhere in between, it's really hard to go wrong with a hognose snake. So there you go. What do you think? Let me know in the comment section below what you think the coolest North American reptile is. Would you like to see this type of list for other continents? As always, if you don't mind, hit the like button, hit subscribe if you enjoyed this type of video. And thank you to the Patreon supporters. You guys are amazing. You get videos early, extra content, that little shot about the hognoses breeding, you got to see that last week. Overall, you guys get extra stuff and it's only a dollar a month and I'd really appreciate it. So Diamond, he just whispered in my ear that he, he likes being posted on
Patreon with his little hat. He's so cute. And because I do videos twice a week, that means I'll see you on Thursday.